In this video, we're going to kick off our discussion of roadway cross sections. When we create roadway cross sections inside Civil 3D, the first object that we need to create is sample lines. Inside of Civil 3D, sample lines are the backbone of creating any sections that we're going to use to display what our roadway looks like inside of Civil 3D. So in order to get to a sample line creation window, we're going to navigate to the home tab of the ribbon bar. We're going to navigate over to the profile and section views section and we're going to go to the sample lines option. So I'm going to pick sample lines and Civil 3D prompts me to select an alignment or press enter to select from list. I'm going to select enter for a, to select from the list and I'm going to select my dev alignment alignment. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And then from here we get into the create sample line group. A sample line group is just a list of sample lines and then what information we're sampling from. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to name my sample line group devxsec and then I'm going to leave it as a counter so that if we create more it'll this will be the first one and we'll we'll move upwards from there. I'm going to go ahead and leave my sample line style as road sample line but just like any other object inside Civil 3D you can edit or create new ones. The sample line options are, are pretty simple. All you have are lines and vertices, and then in model space, same thing, lines, lines and vertices, and then your summary tab and what it's called. So not a lot of customization there. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave it as road sample line. Then we have our sample line label styles. Again, just like all the other label styles that we've talked about, it's going to place a label on your sample line so that you know which sample line you're looking at. And then we go down into the data sources. So when you do a sample line, you're effectively cutting a miniature profile across that sample line. And so that miniature profile that's cut across that sample line samples from certain surfaces or corridors. And so in our first sample line set that we're going to create, we're going to go ahead and just sample from our EG surface. So I'm going to go ahead and unselect all of the other options. And then later, what we can do is we can add some information back depending on what we want to have shown in our cross section. So once you've done all of this, we're going to go ahead and click OK. And now we have the sample line tool to work with. So the sample line tool has the options of what we're going to call our sample line, each individual sample line, what alignment we're based off of, which we already selected as our dev alignment, what our sample line group is, and then we can create a different sample line group or edit the current group that we have, delete the current group. We can pick a group from the drawing. We can edit our swath widths, which we will talk about when we create our sample lines. And then we can sample more sources. We can also sample more sources later on using a different method. So we're going to go ahead and move on to the next option, which is how to actually create our sample lines. So when you create a sample line, you have five options here. You can create by range of station, which is what we're going to go ahead and do. Then you can create at a specific station. So you can pick on the screen at what station you want to create a sample line. Then you can choose from corridor stations. So each station that we have placed a corridor cross section, they will also place a sample line at. You can also pick points on a screen. So you can basically draw a line on the screen using points, or you can select an existing polyline to turn into a sample line. So we're going to go ahead and go with by range of stations. And we get the create sample lines by range of stations window. So we're moving down from here, we have our station range. Do we want to start it from our alignment start? For this, I'm going to go ahead and select false because we want to pick a new start station. So I'm picking the green box and then I'm going to go navigate down to the beginning of my alignment. The reason we don't want to create a cross section from the beginning of our alignment is that we don't actually have any cross sections in this area. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick this beginning of our corridor as the beginning of our alignment to start creating sections from. Then I'm going to go ahead and go to alignment end and I'm going to also select that as false because our alignment end is in the middle of our cul-de-sac. So I'm going to go ahead and pick the green box again to be able to pick on screen our end point. I am going to navigate to the cul-de-sac and I'm going to select the end of an arc right here which is the end of our tangential section before we open up into our corridor or into our cul-de-sac. So from here, then we have the option for swath widths. So what swath widths are is you have a left and a right. It's basically an offset. 
how far do you want to offset from the center line to create your sample line. So if you want your sample line to be 30 feet to the left of your center line and 30 feet to the right of your sample line, then you would adjust your widths. So if you want to snap to a specific alignment, if you had a swath width alignment that you wanted to, to sample to, then you could go ahead and set this as true. I don't have those, so I'm gonna go ahead and go with false, but I am gonna change my swath width because our roadway is only about 30 feet in half, so it's 60 feet wide. I'm gonna go ahead and set my swath width on both sides as 35. So I'm moving from left to right, changing both from 50 to 35. And then we move on to how often we want to sample. You can use sampling increments, true or false. Then increment relative to, you can choose an absolute station or your station range start. I don't want to have my sampling relative to my station range start because I'm starting my station at 29.11. I don't want everything to have a 0.11 on the end. So I am going to go with an absolute station and I'm gonna change all of my increments from 50 to 25. So I'm moving in here, changing everything to 25 and then moving down, you can have additional sampling locations. So at range start, at range end, horizontal geometry points. So like a beginning of a curve, or an end of a curve, and then super elevation criticals. If we had set our super elevations to change based on our radiuses in a, in a design setting, then it would basically put a cross section at the critical point of your super elevation diagrams. So we're gonna go ahead and leave these all as false, and we're gonna go ahead and click okay. And so when we do that, it doesn't appear like anything happened because nothing showed up in the command line and we're now in another command which is specify station along baseline because we're now in the at station command but if you go ahead and hit escape twice what you're going to see is that we now have these blue lines that are running along our corridor and at each one of them it has a station equation that are 25 feet apart and so these are our sample lines that we just created.